Writing tests is an integral part of my day-to-day -day work. Setting up test data and hydrating big objects is not something I like about writing tests. Sometimes we are forced to set dummy values because our test does not depend on those values, but the construction code does. When you are working with .NET, AutoFixture is a great way to set up dummy data. Let's look at how AutoFixture can make our tests more robust. I'll be doing a series of videos on AutoFixture and the various use cases and scenarios it can be used. In this video, we'll look at setting up AutoFixture and some few basic scenarios in using it for a test. AutoFixture is an open source library for .NET designed to minimize the arrange phase of your unit test in order to maximize maintainability. Its primary goal is to allow developers to focus on what is being tested rather than how to set up the test scenario by making it easier to create object graphs containing test data. So let's see what this arrange phase of a test means. If you look at the three phase pattern, the arrange, act and assert, you can see the arrange phase is where all the necessary preconditions and inputs are set. So that is where the test is basically being set up with all the data that you require for that. If you're looking at the four phase test from the X unit test patterns, this is the setup phase in the whole test of the four phases. Let's look at a sample in Visual Studio on what this means and how AutoFixture can help us make our test more stable and maintainable. Here I have a simple customer class which takes in a first name, a last name, age and an address. There are appropriate null checks for each of these properties. I have a computed property full name which simply returns the first name and last name separated by a space. Let's add a test for the full name property so that it always returns the expected value. On the left here, I have added a test which uses the XUnit framework. That's why it's mentioned as a fact since this does not have any parameters. The test creates a customer. SUT stands for system under test. The new customer requires the first name and the last name which we pass in, which is part of the test test. The age, we don't care about it and the address. So we pass in dummy values for that. We execute the method, full name or the property and compare it with the actuals and the expected value. Running this again, this does pass. Now, how can we improve this? Let's say we want to have a couple of more test cases for this than just checking on my name. So we can very well pass these as parameters. So the string first name and string last name and whatever is expected. So that would be here first name and instead of not it would be last name and we would be comparing the expected value with the actuals here. To pass this as parameters we now need to make this as a theory test and have inline data. So first name is Rahul Nath and we expect Rahul Nath. Let's run this again to make sure we have not broken any tests and it all passes. I can create another test case by passing another inline data. I'll run all the tests. So now you can see there's two tests that's passing one for each of these cases. This all looks good until someone decides to change the constructor of the customer class. Let's say along with the address, we also now need the zip code. So there we go. We have added a zip code to our constructor. Now you can clearly see our test is broken. But there was no reason why this test should be breaking in this case because our test anyways doesn't depend on zip code. But in this particular instance, I'm forced to come here and say again a dummy value and the tests pass again. The tests have become quite fragile to the actual structure of the constructor in this particular case. Let's see how AutoFixture can help us improve this scenario. So instead of this, I'll create a fixture class which is a new fixture that ha that is from now auto fixture. I can say fixture now build me a customer and say with because I want the first name in a particular way. So I can say a dot first name needs to be the parameter that I pass in the first name. And here I'm also interested in the last name. So a 
dot last name should be the last name so now we have both these properties set as required so now we can say dot create so that's the only properties that my tests actually care about and now i've got a system under test here let's make sure we have not broken anything i'll run this again and it's all a success let's see what's actually happening here with the sut so i'll put a breakpoint here and debug this so this is the case where the first name is visual and the last name is studio so if we inspect the properties of the system under test you can see that the address age and zip code has got random values here it's basically the name of that property appended by a guid the other two properties first name and the last name got the values that we specifically passed in even if somebody was to come here and add another new property or change the order of these properties this whole test is still working it doesn't break so if i was to run the test again that just works fine let's say i've added another property which i don't care about the test still works fine and there's no breakages here i didn't have to change anything to my test because my test didn't care about the new property but let's say in this case i've added a middle name which i actually care about now so say string middle name so let's run this test again and it should still pass because i've not yet changed the implementation or the behavior of full name but now let's say we come here and say hey it needs not be first and last name but now you also need to include the middle name which is in between here so first name the middle name and last name so now let's go and run this test again and we should see that fails which is what we wanted because the behavior of full name has changed so let's debug this again to actually see what's happening so in this case we have a customer a system under test we see that it still has the first name visual and the last name studio but wait we got the middle name as well which is a random input red value still random but the full name was actually affected by that random value so now our tests needs to change because the full names implementation or the behavior has changed so now i need to come back in here and say hey now i need to start looking for a middle name as well so now i need to pass so then i expect the name to be rahul p nath and i expect this one to be microsoft visual studio and that's middle name so i need to set that name so let's order it up and let's run the test again it passes now so whenever the customer changed for the reasons that this test cared about we were forced to change the test as well but whenever it changed for the reasons that we didn't care about we had to do nothing with the test and it still passed so auto fixture is what has helped us here it has been generating us the dummy values that the customer requires but allowing us to explicitly set the values that we care about and then do the test but still there's a lot of setup going on here with the fixture and the with statements let's see how we can make it a bit more cleaner with something of auto data attributes so let's remove this i expect a customer as well to be injected to me which is the sat so i need to choose inline auto data which is a class that's coming from auto fixture so what this is going to do to us is basically use these as parameters and then pass the value so for whatever it cannot find it will use auto fixture to generate it set the sets first name middle name and the last name and the other test as before so let's run this test and it fails so let's see what's happening here so drilling down let's expand this a bit up So it says the string cannot be bound to customer. We pass in the string first and that's what's mapping up here. So this needs to go down last in the chain when we are passing in line attribute. So these attributes get matched accordingly and then when the attributes run out from the in line data it starts generating it from auto fixture. So I have to pass in the sat in the last in this case now running the test again it all passes as expected so it says test has multiple result outcomes and two of them are passed so now the test is much more cleaner here because you don't have to new up a fixture of your own nor do all those with properties because we're just using the setters to set the property the test is still doing what it is intended to so if we were to remove the middle name from here this test would fail 
and everything as usual. If you were to add a new property, the customer would automatically get that. And if that affects properties or the functionality that we are testing, then we'll need to update these tests. So you've seen that how auto fixture has made this test more stable, robust and maintainable. Hope this helps you to get started with auto fixture. We'll see more cases of auto fixture and uses in future videos. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to keep notified about the new videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.